My name is Brian Alexander. I'm speaking to you from Vermont in the United States of America. And my topic is about play and pedagogy. Why on earth would we even want to consider including play in such a serious topic as pure mediated pedagogy? In fact, the strangeness of including play in the field of teaching and learning, especially for adult learners, is a kind of shock to a lot of us. So why do we have this chapter? A few reasons. First, if people play a game, person versus computer, person versus a deck of cards, certain learning opportunities begin to open up. One is the sheer simple reality of having to learn a game system, having to learn how to play cribbage or Call of Duty. Either way, you have to teach yourself a set of rules, systems. You have to do detailed analysis in order to succeed. On top of that, you have to learn what the game represents, be it something as abstract as politics and strategy and chess, or something as detailed as later Roman imperial strategy in Total War Rome. Beyond this, when people play together, other learning opportunities begin to present themselves. People have to learn how to collaborate. They have to learn, at a meta level, how to learn from each other. They begin also to learn social interaction. And we see this with children as well as with adult learners. Beyond all this, I think we have the benefit that play opens up a whole world of creativity and possibility. Some people speak of a game as being a magic circle drawn apart from the rest of the world. Well, play lets you enter that circle, and once you do, all kinds of possibilities are there for role playing, for creativity, for imagination. And it seems natural to me as a teacher that that is a place where all kinds of learning can occur. Thank you for watching.